Hello, everyone. We are back once more on a Tuesday to bring you Vampire the Masquerade. I am not the storyteller this time. It's been a while. <laughs> it feels good to be back in the player seat. Um, but hello. Um, today, the only real news that I have to give is that this is our new campaign, The Sword of Cain, Philadelphia by Night, and we're sponsored by Grinding Coffee Co. You can go to uh, Grinding Coffee Co. and put in our code Party Wipe Games for a 10% discount on any coffee purchases. Uh, right now they have a uh, seasonal blend called Pumpkin Spice, and it is Pumpkin Spice, fuck yeah, Pumpkin Spice. It's delicious. I didn't drink for dramatic effect. I was actually thirsty. Um, <laughs> that being said, um, we should get into a habit of introducing ourselves and who we'll be playing so uh, people will know who we are, even if the names are directly under us. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and start first since I'm still talking anyways. Um, hello. I am Rindis of Party Wipe Games, and I will be playing Sorka O'Doyle. She is a La Sombra, although as a uh, Sabat, she will not actually acknowledge that, apparently. So, you know, we're learning things. <laughs> so, funnily enough, you are a Sabat that is going to be in a non-Sabat city. So. Oh, that's right. So, <laughs> you right. Are I, I acknowledge it, but I don't acknowledge it. Mwahaha. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'll go ahead and pass it to Shay since she's would be on my right on the screen. Shay, Shay, she is like so focused. Shay, sorry, you're up. <laughs> um. Hi, I'm Shay. I'm sorry, I was a little, I am a little out of it. Who are you and who are you playing? I'm Shay and I'm playing Lucia the Gang Girl. And I have a dogo. You have a dogo. Yeah. Hello, hello. Thank you, new follower. Uh, jumping on up to Kay. Hey, hey, hey. I am playing the former and current. Faking, faking current, a Malkavian named Delia O'Doyle, who is the sister of uh, Sorka O'Doyle. O'Doyle rules. O'Doyle um, rules. Yes. Um, Listen, it's gonna I happen. think it's hysterical that neither one of you is a physical character, too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah, I, I, I have... I have uh, potent, so I, I can be physical, I just don't want to. <laughs> I, can, I can shoot you. Pow, pow. Um, but yeah, I am a... I and, need uh, um, for the sake For the sake of the Camarilla, Camarilla, I am a Malkavian artist. See the pencil in my hair? Artist. <laughs> artist. Is that how you tell who's really an artist? Yeah. yeah. It's not chewed up, though. Hers is chewed up. But... Mm -hmm. That means they're a struggling artist. That means they're a crazy artist. One must no, or just an artist with ADHD. Alright, since I'm last, I'll just talk, because, yeah, that's <laughs> what I do. Hey, I, I, I'm I, Cadence. I can be found at the Twitter thing. Um, I'm going to be playing Miss Tanya Bojali. Caitiff. Also of the Sabbat. And they don't care. Well, they might care. As long as the Camarilla doesn't know. We're good. You pretend you are as a kid. I just pretend I'm somebody all the time, so it doesn't matter. Ah, makes sense. And uh, I am Priest Dragon. I will be the storyteller for this lovely event. And I will be uh, introducing these monsters to the city of Philadelphia. So that should be a lot of fun. I'm Speaking of Philadelphia, you. I'm going up in Thanksgiving. Oh, let me know when you're up here. We should, we should hang. Yes, I'm seeing Anastasia and hanging out with family for Thanksgiving. Oh, cool. But mostly seeing Anastasia. <laughs> but continue. Yes, sorry. I just was like, wait. 
Guys, so, um, the... Who are you? Who am I, me? Yeah, introduce yourself as well. I just did introduce myself. I, I said, my lovely, I am Reese Dragon, and I will be running the, the game oh, well, I, as the storyteller. I genuinely did not hear that, so just do it again. Our, right our lovely <laughs> host was spaced out. <laughs> I, might, I might have been spaced out trying to get the Twitter post working. Gotcha. Um, but I am more than happy to introduce myself again. Uh, I will be storytelling for these lovely folks. And uh, we're about to have a very likely bloody time. Uh, keep in mind that this will be a very adult stream, especially since we will be playing Sabat characters. Uh, so it is definitely not the characters or the NPCs or, or anybody that is doing this. These are the characters. So please keep that in mind. All right. Are we all ready to start out? Yes. Okay. Um, so the camera is going to zoom in from above over the Ben Franklin Bridge. Um, and you're going to come into the city of Philadelphia. We're actually going to start at a goth club right off of South Street called Ulana's. Um, they have a, a small two-story club there uh, with a goth night. Um, and in uh, a small corner... Uh, we find our coterie of vampires, um, each getting ready to uh, share a cup of sorts. Um, each of them has uh, put in a blood point into the chalice, and they are about to share uh, the cup. Um, so the pack priest is actually going to pass it around for every, everyone to take a drink. They're around. We're not all taking it like a shot? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it all depends on how you guys want to do it. If you guys want them as shots, we can do shots for sure. Um, me, Delia, will speak up and say, um, that's, that's not the fun way to do it. That's not the modern way to do it. You guys are so far in the back. The modern way to do it is to, like, split it up into, like, different small... You see these? These are shot glasses. Split them up into these shot glasses. Then at the same time, we all go one, two, three, down. You tap, and then you shoot it back like that. So the pack priest Adrian uh, looks at Delia and says, "Delia, we have talked about this. This is not this is not a uh, sorority house, but we are in a club." I don't think it's, it's such not a bad exactly idea a club. if we're going to be doing this as a sign of unity. It doesn't matter how the ceremony is performed, so long as we perform it, yes? Wouldn't you think we're more unified, too, if like we all take it at the same time? I am in agreement. I, I'm, I am saying I don't think the, uh, the method of the delivery of the ceremony is what's important, but the... Mm -hmm. uh, the end result of it. We are we but, are still partaking in the ceremony, are we not? But, priest, Adrian, you are the priest by the Son of Holy Spirit. You're good. If you say it, we do it. I was just having a suggestion. It kind of like smiles wryly with like no real warmth to it. And, uh, he says, uh, if that is what the pack wants, then that is what we will do. I look at the um, end. He, uh, he heads up to the bar and has a small talk to the bartender. Um, and gets some shot glasses and brings them back over. Wait, while he's up there? Can I, can I, can I look at everyone? Sure. Be like, how you guys feel about all this? We're already here. No time to turn back now. Isn't it exciting, though? I'm getting tingles. You're going home. Yes. I talked to you enough. I want to talk to the other two. <laughs> Just scrunches her nose and sits back down. You guys excited? We're gonna be buddies! We're gonna be best friends, guys! Blood bonded, quite literally! 
Oh my god. As the priest comes over, he he looks at uh he looks at Sorsha and says, Okay, I, I'll give her the shot glasses, but could you please keep the blood bond down? <laughs> yeah, um Mum's the word. And he will uh pour out the blood in the shot glasses. I normally wouldn't care, but our uh, our job is to keep a low profile, as it were. If anyone else, for taking Bloody Mary shots. I look to Delia again. How does this work again? So, you hold it in your hand. We all hold it up at the same time. We cheers. And we go, one, two, three. We tap it on the table. And then you shoot it back in your mouth. All in one go. So what is Usually the reason Usually there would for, be a chaser, for... but I don't know if this is required. What were you saying? Sorry. I just want to know what's the reason for the tapping on the table. It's a part is of the... Is this to bring forth the spirits from, from the natural wood of it, yeah? If yeah, it were, definitely that. If it were real alcohol, it would bring forth the spirits, yes. Excellent. With this... It brings forth our unity. Our it brings forth it brings forth happiness. It brings forth connection. It it takes our you tapping it. All of our you know how people say most of your life force or unlife force is in your toes. So you tap it right. No, brings it from your toes up and then you take it and then you inhale it. Delia, you're rambling again. Let's go. Come on, guys. Cheers. Sarko will take one of the shot glasses. Cool. All right. Three, two, one. Ah. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Same time. Take it back. Okay, um, so everybody joins in the Valdery. Um, so everyone gets small flashes of everyone else's uh, backstory. Um, so you have the, the feeling of being out in the woods and hunting with a dog. Uh, you have the, the quick sensation of a flash of uh, reading some tarot cards. Uh, you have the, uh, the sensation of... Uh, being uh, part of a rich mob family from Philadelphia um, and doing some uh, behind closed doors deals. Um, and then in the same instant you come to and uh, you're standing exactly where you were. Um, so since this counts as a blood bond, I need to emphasize that I have bond junkie. So, yes, um, basically anyone that has partaken in the Valdery, the way we're going to do it, previously, you used to have to take uh, a piece of paper out of the chalice, um, and then you would slowly become more bonded to certain pack mates as you took the piece of paper out of the chalice and read the name. Um, we're just going to make it your simple one step bonded to everyone, and you're two steps bonded to the pack priest because the pack priest puts more blood into the Valdery than everyone else. Is there any blood left over? Uh, no, they, they would have used all the blood. They don't want to waste anything. Oh. Um, at this point, he kind of uh, motions you all uh, out of the club and uh, to a small uh, back alleyway behind the club. How are we feeling? Do we feel dizzy or fine? Um, probably pretty good. Uh, you're you're getting some vampire blood, which is even more rich than human blood. So you're probably like a little bit you know, high or a little bit, uh, feeling a little bit more powerful than normal. 
any flashes from the priest or no? Uh, no. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a uh, white van uh, that's pulled up to the back of the alleyway. Um, and he motions you all to get in. Why'd you guys have to make it so obvious? You were just talking about not being suspicious. White fans are the most suspicious thing ever. He just kind of like sighs and says, they are the most suspicious thing ever because there are the most white fans around. They are simultaneously the most suspicious and the least suspicious vehicle. Touche, touche. It's touche. I like it better when you say Tushy because it sounds like Tushy. She has a point. It's yeah. kind of like saying a you're an ass not, for calling me out. A point does not also. necessarily mean it's a good one. Mm. It has more of a double meaning. Does that make it a bad one? So how long are we going to be bonded together? <laughs> <laughs> she just kind of grins at Tanya for that one, because, like, I was thinking the same thing. Uh... <laughs> Adrian looks back at you and says, uh, Till death do us part. <laughs> Tell everyone, you're stuck with me forever. Okay. So keep all keep all your bond stuff in mind. Um but yeah, so you get uh into the back of the white van and uh Adrian will take you for a ride to a uh broken down warehouse. Um in right off the uh the docks of the Delaware River. Um and that's where your clan haven will be. Um, did anybody actually upgrade the Clan Haven or no? Uh, I put my last second points into um, into uh, security and cells. Is I, that I going can. in the Clan Haven now? Yes. Okay. I have more to spend if we need to, but if anyone wants anything specific. Sarka Unless is, we need more for hours. Sarka's going to look around and just be like, this is... This is certainly something. Um, you should have gotten into contact with me first. I could have made better arrangements for where we would be doing all of our business. I mean, this, I can't be seen in a place like this. The whole point is not to be seen in a place like this. Besides, mm -hmm. not everything is as it seems. I would hope so. Is this gonna be like Harry Potter where you go into the tents and it's like bigger than it seems like it is on the outside? Uh he Adrian turns around and he's like, Yeah, run through the wall. I'll I'll run through the wall. <laughs> you smack off the wall. <laughs> I what off the wall? I you smack off the wall. You, you oh, tried to run through a wall. You the wall. Into the wall. <laughs> water? Like what? No, no, you didn't fall into water. You ran into a wall. Cool. I did. And he just I like. <laughs> I'd like to use. I'd like to he use goes like, like this. Run through the wall and knock the wall down. I am sorry for her. She has been this way <laughs> for many a decade. Um. You love me. Okay, so I do. So when uh, he opens the doors, um, all you can see is kind of like black, uh, and he kind of motions you in. I, I whistle for my dog to follow. Yeah. It's a big, big black dog with a twin, with a twinge of red in the irises. Ooh. Just scratch behind his ears. Um. So as you guys get past a certain point through the threshold, probably about six or seven feet, um, it goes from black to being a nice full room. Um, you will see uh, like a security monitoring station 
um, a few couches, some TVs. Uh, it looks like a, a homey setup for a uh, a warehouse kind of thing. Uh, as you look above you, you can actually see that there is a window, um, not a window, a mirror that actually um, makes it so it looks like it's black until you hit a certain point in the threshold back. Uh-huh. Makes sense. I don't, Casey does not know what it does, but I feel like, I feel like I, I do, um, Delia would. Uh, I'm a little confused. Is this, um, is this, is this the, the mansion thing? Nope. No, it's, it's not a mansion. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a warehouse, um, right off the Delaware River, um, that basically is like, kind of like far out away from the shipyard uh, that was abandoned that they basically repurposed. Oh, I thought this was... I thought this was the, our haven. This is our haven. This so is our there's, haven as a whole clan. Right. As a coterie, this is our haven, and then you can also potentially have your own havens. So the, o the O'Doyles have their own separate haven. You as a character are allowed to buy your own haven, or you can upgrade the existing clan or coterie haven. Oh. Correct. And that was the discussion we had earlier of, are you guys going in on the haven the O'Doyles have, or are we doing something else? And... I when... thought... Okay. I, I thought it was the haven that the O'Doyles were in. No. I would, I would not own a warehouse and live in a warehouse. <laughs> I, I made it very clear that I had a, a high rise <laughs> wealthy which is, wealthy which is place. Why this was confusing me. Yes. But as Reese had said earlier, that the coterie has its own haven as well. Okay. You guys are gonna hear noises because I don't have my AirPods. That's okay. It's fine. That's basically like City of Philadelphia yeah, noises, it's just so Philadelphia it works perfectly. Noise. <laughs> yeah. Um so he, he says there are some small amenities here. It can, of course, be improved later. Uh, but uh, this is just basically our meeting place, as it were. Well, it's going to need a lot of work. You can't even just have meetings in this place without making it fancy? <laughs> says the artist. Says the artist. I was going to hire you to make it look nice. Would you not want a commission? I mean, I can make a mural, but it won't be your fancy stuff. Art is in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. I do have a question, though. What is the security for this building like? As I, I personally am no security and, expert. And, and that's not a good sign for this place. Oh, Tower, we are in a city. I get it. I can pull some strings, and I think Lucia has connections with security. I'm already laying the couch. I'm quite anachronistic, as it were. I am, uh, my security is myself. <laughs> I mean, I can put forth some resources for making this place a little more comfortable for all of us, but... I can handle the furniture, but we should focus on actual security, maybe a, a night watchman or something to make this place a little less accessible for teenagers and ne'er-do-wells mm. as tasty as they can be. We could probably find some... some people do we have a fridge? Yeah, there's a fridge there. Cool. I start putting some of my, my packs of blood in it. Keep them cold. Yeah, gotta keep them nice. I can see you carry one of those things with the, the handle behind you that's like a little ice box. Yep, for now. Just just because we were moving moving into a new place. 
So is there any business for us to attend to tonight? Tonight you need to pre present yourselves to the Prince of the City and get accepted. It is a tradition of the Camarilla. Oh, yeah. fun. Yes. If I have already been low-key introduced, it wasn't like full-blown introduced, it was more just like they were let they let them know that I existed so that I could um, exist. We've been operating. Not really, like, we've they been don't operating know my name. independently, more or less, for some time now. Is this, yeah, I see. I guess. Is this something if we are going to be infiltrated in the Camarilla, you will need to be uh, introduced. We'll be making okay. proper allegiances. Alrighty, sounds good. I was just making sure that that wasn't going to be an issue. They don't know, like, my name and everything. They just know that my sire uh, made some people to... May embraced some people to take lovely drinks from. I will warn you. embraced you to drink you? Um, yes and no. So it's kind of like, these guys were fancy. They were fancy, like my sister, but not like that fancy. Basically, I went to school at this estate and the people that were there liked having little like kindred, whatever they're called, parties. And um, basically, you know how that blood we just had tasted like very good, like very good? They like that. So, they basically had us be those people that gave that. So they would like take it out of us and put it in like fancy wine glasses and stuff and just be like. But we were kept um, hidden from everyone. So like we weren't tech, they had to come and like inspect and make sure we weren't able to leave and stuff like that, which is why we weren't properly introduced because Supposedly, we weren't going to be leaving the place that we were. But, you know. Yeah, they're very interesting people. They're, they're very, they're very, um, very popular, so they can kind of break some rules sometimes. Sometimes. Only sometimes. I'm though. Well, in any event, there are some uh, rooms here for changing some uh, bathrooms if you wanted to wash up. And uh, I will be having a limo pick you up. Oh, well, at least we can handle that. How soon are they arriving? Uh, I gave you about an hour and a half. <laughs> Sorka just kind of holds back a snicker and is like, an hour and a half to get ready? Especially to present ourselves to the prince. Did I stop you? No, I am just <laughs> making sure you wanted us to deliver a good impression. At an hour and a half, I can barely make myself look presentable in that way, but you want Delia to look presentable in an hour and a half? Or the, I expect the great room? things from all of you. Including your sister. Get myself ready, don't worry. I trust you to keep her in line. I will be. I can draw a straight line, don't worry. And Zorka just kind of shakes her head. And it's a metaphor. Him. I can. I know when to. I know when to be crazy, when not to be. That's the part of being a college student, you know. Party on the weekends, business in the front, party in the back, that type of stuff. That is called a mullet. Ely's got a mullet. <laughs> no, not like that. It's canon, I mean, too late. A mullet could be a metaphor to it as well. Yeah, the metaphor is a mullet. <laughs> yes. It's a mullet for. Okay. Um, so at that point, Andre leaves and uh, lets you guys get ready. Uh, there's already, like, uh, Lucia's clothes are already, like, strewn in a line on the way to the showers. 
when you present yourself, they'll be like, gag girl, we don't care, that's fine. <laughs> you hit things, we get it. Gang girl's like, I wore my best jeans for this. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm not happy about having an hour and a half to get ready, so I'm going to get on my uh, shit. I hand the phone to <laughs> Delia and say, call my assistant. Okay, I'm already putting on makeup. <laughs> yeah, so. I call the assistant, put it on speakerphone. Uh, my assistant is uh, one of my, my herd, because why wouldn't you feed on your assistant? Um, and so uh, their name is Stella. And I say, Stella, I need you to bring bring me the black dress. Yeah, the one, the one with the short hem. I need it stat. You... Meet me at, and I'll look for the nearest Starbucks, and and say, be here in 30 minutes. Starbucks every other block in Philadelphia, so I know. that's not a problem. Just, yeah, <laughs> it's like, it, I just need to not be seen in an abandoned warehouse. Uh, so she's like, uh, very good, I will run it right down now. Good. I'll, I'll motion for her to for Delia to hang up. I hang up. Did you get me a dress? Call her back. <laughs> Call her back. Uh, you, you hear, like, the engine uh, running and, like, a door closing, and she says, yes? Yo, Stella! Uh, my sister Stella! Will need a, my sister will need a dress as well, Stella. Yes. Ah, uh, yes, of one. course. Bring me the one that has, like, all the cool lace on it. You know the red uh, and black one? You hear, you hear, like, footsteps on the stairs and, like, shuffling in the closet, you know? <laughs> it's, technic it's technically... It's technically... Is it, is it vinyl? Or just... It's sort of just... It wouldn't be in my closet. Oh, that one. <laughs> it's just... Yeah. You hear another you hear another door open and she's like, got it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Alright, be there in thirty. I'm gonna just Ooh. walk to the store. Sorry, will you be able to get ready in an hour? No, but I am <laughs> going to certainly try. I come out Ooh. fifteen minutes later and I'm just like I'm ready. Just gonna scrunch my nose. <laughs> Continue out of the haven to go wait at the Starbucks. My kind of vampire. Fun fact: uh, I try to play all of the uh, the gang roll and like avoid the fae, like the plague, because I have to get all dressed up and fancy and put on makeup to play fae. <laughs> so as an ST, I'm like during my LARP, I take all the brutes. Give me the dumb ones. I, I like jeans. Um. Okay, so you guys get ready in about an hour and a half. Uh, the car pulls up and you hear a honk. Um, waiting outside. Um, no, actually, I'll wait. Never mind, continue. Yeah. Um,. There will be a uh, gentleman outside, and uh, he will be holding the back door open. Like he has the very that? fancy, like, uh, chauffeur, like, coat and hat. Ooh. Sorka. Sorja. We should get one of those. I have one of those. We have one at home. Don't stare at it too long. And she'll get into the car. We have chauffeur at awesome. home. <laughs> we don't need another one. She's just got like a line of chauffeurs, you know? Um, so does everybody hop in? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so the... Um, limousine will take you around back into the city proper. 
uh, and will park in front of one of the high rises down there. Um, you will get out uh, and. Tanya. Uh, Tower. What's up? I said Miss Tanya, and I point to the skyscraper. Ah. The tower. <laughs> right. Yeah. You predicted it. <laughs> um, when you get out, uh, the Major D driver uh, actually hands you a uh, a key card uh, that goes into one of the elevators. I was told to give you this. Thank you. Uh, call me at this number if you need me, and I'll give you a card. Is there anything else we need to know before we head up? He kind of keeps his voice down. He says, um, I was told that this is where uh, the Elysium is held. can tell you what it is when we get in the elevator. Very good. Thank you. We'll keep this handy and I down the dealio the number. Go put it in my pocket. I don't do phones. Alright, I put it put it in the in the boob of my dress. Cause I don't have pockets right now. Okay, so how many how many of you know who uh who or what Elysium is? Hands. <laughs> Who was actually in the Camarilla? Oh no. <laughs> okay, um, so you, you have two people. That... No, no, I don't. <laughs> no, no, in character. So you have two people that can explain to you what to actually expect. I do that. They're gonna ask you a lot of questions. They're gonna ask you what you want to do here, why you're here, which we should probably figure out. And if you know the traditions. And the moment we get inside, the moment we get inside, there's going to be people, there's probably people watching us right now. So no, so Ixne on the Tabase. Tapioca? I whisper. So as you guys come in, uh, there is a full security desk uh, at one of the things, um, but you do see the elevator bank on your left hand side. Um, real fast, with my uh, score in uh, in etiquette, um, what do I have to know? Like, what is there anything like really important about like? I'm just explaining as as we're up there, like what the different traditions are, what the policy is when like you walk in and all that kind of stuff, like how you're supposed to act around them. But me, as in Casey, does not know that. So how many dots do you have in etiquette, Kay? Three, with a special okay. name, Marilla. Well, that's perfect then. Um, so the information that you get about Elysium's is that it's where all the business of the Camarilla takes place. Um, no blood can be shed uh, during an Elysium. So that's why everybody is able to meet there and do their business there and not fear any kind of uh, attack on their person. Um, so it is incredibly well protected. Um, generally, there is a... Uh, sheriff that patrols the entire city uh, and keeps the prince's law. Uh, there is a keeper of Elysium that keeps the Elysium and makes sure nobody breaks it. Um, and then there is a scourge that is basically the prince's hired assassin. Um, and the scourge also will look for uh, kindred that are un unpresented and bring them before the prince to be presented. Which we're heading off at the pass. Right. Wait, question. Yes. Can I wreck a little? Disappointed. You look did disappointed. Not, did not hear what Delia was saying. Oh, I said, uh, this is Casey. Oh. Okay. Um, question. Would I be able, okay, can I, uh, retcon a little? I was just kind of rambling earlier. I feel like I probably was properly introduced to the, to the prince. Um, okay. 
I just probably was not in a coterie or anything yet, so. It's kind of just like, this is my, this is my chat. I go in the elevator too. Um, so <laughs> the card that they gave you is uh, like a metal key card and it has like holes punched in it. And there's a slot that you can stick it into when you actually go into the elevator. I just here for Julia to take the lead, hand her the card. Okay, I do that then. Um, so as you insert the key card, the uh, elevator doors close. Um, and you don't actually have to pick a floor. Um, it automatically lights the, uh, light that says, uh, P on it. Yeah. And, uh, the elevator starts to go. P is not a number. What's the prince's name? Oh, wait, P! Does that mean prince? I hope so, or else this is going to be a weird party. It's penthouse, but we'll go prince. That's funny, too. <laughs> I can totally house. see people as a bot writing prints on the, the elevator at some point. Mm -hmm. Um. 
Oh, so I, I got I lost see. in that thought. What was what were the other <laughs> questions? Um, I didn't have a question. I was just gonna inform everyone. Um, you guys know that like popular singer in like the '90s, I think it was, um, like 30 years ago, I believe. I don't know. Um, Prince. That's not who this is. Gets confusing sometimes. Now we can go. All right then. That I just wanted to let you guys know. Uh, so. Do, do I know the this popular prince she is referring to? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Where's history? <laughs> I want to roll just to find out if I know. Uh. I've so it would be. History and intelligence. Where's history, though? Uh, you could go under... Let's see what academics. we could put under. Yeah, I mean, I guess academics, because I have history of art as a specialty. So, so I, I would go... I would go... Uh, academics, intelligence, or etiquette and intelligence, whichever's higher. I have no idea what this means. <laughs> oh, these dice come up differently. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I, 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 I think their green is hits and. Okay, so yeah, so the the way it comes up is just the way it is in the book. So if you look, um, it rolled you two uh, dice with the one pip on it, which means they're failed rolls. So you rolled a one and a two. The greens are uh, successes, and then crits have, like, they're the same as the greens, except they have the little stars next to them as well. Okay. That's gonna take so that's actually the way it's displayed in the book, so that's actually very helpful. Why are yours separated? Uh, hunger dice, uh, maybe? Hunger oh, okay. I definitely ate someone last time, <laughs> or before we started. And I just drank some people, you guys' blood a little bit. So I can slake it. So oh. to be fair, playing Sabat characters, you have absolutely like no care in the world for drinking somebody dry. Yeah, which so is why it would I make... started at zero. <laughs> exactly. So it would just make sense that you would have actually just eaten someone. Um well There has no real bearing on your role, but what about just... supernatural blood? How much does supernatural blood slake? So, basically, it, it's still a one-for-one, one, but what supernatural blood gives for you is if you get supernatural blood of somebody with a generation that's lower than you, it actually will give you a bonus dice. Okay. Uh, great. Um, oh, I was bringing it up because I have Methuselah's Thirst, so. Wait, how do you have Methuselah's Thirst? Isn't that a... You would take that as a flaw. It's a flaw. Yeah, it's a flaw. Okay. That just it, means in order not, to fully... Like, yeah, it's, it's something different. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it's um, in order to slake your hunger, you just have to have um, supernatural blood to slake it all the way. So to go down to zero? Okay, that's something yeah. very different than what I know it as. Yeah, that's no, why I, that's why I emphasize that. I'm like, it's very it's very different from what you're <laughs> okay. thinking of. Okay. No. <laughs> um so Delia, you would know that the uh the prince's name is Marcus. Marcus. Um he actually took the go throne to Marcus. Go to uh Marcus. about five years ago. Um and Rin, what is is it the Hakata mm -hmm. that uh, had the uh, children of sediment? The children of what? Uh, set. I think. So. Oh, the Setites are the ministry. Yeah. Ministry. That's right. Um. So, oddly enough, the prince is of the ministry, which is very rare. Oh, that's strange. Um, that's so cool. I like it. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but they actually have uh, status um, from a Justicar uh, for assisting in a, a war. I believe the status was Oath Keeper. So uh, they are a very up and coming prince. Um, and they rule over a large swath of territory between Philadelphia and Trenton. So I don't know how much you want to pass that along, but that you also get that from your uh, three dots. Also, uh, just a note for fifth edition: um, the set types are actually anarch, or the ministry are anarchs now uh, because of the Banu Hakim sabotaging their chance of entering the Camarilla. So that's like it's you can still have it um, because you know you can have outliers, but it's just it, extra interesting that there. Yep, it was actually it was actually weird back in the day too. It doesn't make it any less weird today. No, and that's why um, I'm like, oh, cool. I wonder why he's still here. <laughs> that's actually why I mentioned the Justicar status, um, mm -hmm. because that that's basically why he's allowed to hold position in the Camarilla. Sweet, yeah, especially if a Justicar is giving him props. Yeah, it came from uh, Cock Robin himself. Mm -hmm. Good old Cock Robin. Yo. That's better. I was like, it doesn't look dark. Okay. Um, so with all that background out of the way, uh, the elevator opens up. Um, there is a, uh, a dance floor here um, with uh, some goth-type music playing. And uh, you see many beautiful people dancing, and it's that very, like, stop-go of, like, supernatural movement. Um, in addition, there is a small corner uh, that is basically shrouded in darkness. Um, and over behind the dance floor, you can actually see the picture of the skyline of Philadelphia in the background, because you're at the actual top of this uh, skyscraper. It looks like this section of the tower is actually three floors high. Um, the second floor has like a glass ceiling, so you can actually see up too. I wonder if any tourists actually ever try to come up here. I'm sure they do. They'll just stay for dinner. Oh, that's a funny joke. I like that. Um... As you walk in, you do see that the uh, the elevator door is flanked by uh, two people in suits. Uh, I nod my head to them. They kind of like look at you and nod. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll go. Uh, actually, I'll look and I'll be like to these guys and be like, "We are here to see Prince Marcus." The man, the myth, the legend himself. Um. They say, ah, uh, and like one kind of gets on like a small, like walkie talkie type thing, uh, and they call over a Mr. Chase. Um, in about 30 seconds, and without anybody actually being aware of his presence. Uh, Mr. Chase shows up um, from, like, kind of your back right-hand side, which doesn't really make sense with the way... Like, you should have seen him at some point, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he says, please follow me. Oh. Uh, very well-dressed, uh, red uh, button-down shirt, uh, like, priest-collar jacket, um, black gloves and uh, Sue Pan's very nice shoes. Uh, all very much uh, brand name, very expensive stuff. Um, everybody give me a wits awareness. Wits awareness. Uh, I got have a specialty in smell, so I will roll one dice extra, and it'll be the first die. Okay. In case there's anything regarding that. Three successes. 
Oh, look at you getting crit. Oh, that's a crit. Hey! I don't like these dice. They're cute. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool. Okay. So, Miss Tanya, um, you're the only one that notices, um, but Mr. Chase, basically, even though he looks totally at rest, you can identify no less than three weapons on him, and even though he looks like he's standing perfectly still, he's actually in some kind of strange fighting stance where he can move in any direction that he needs to. So, he's very much, like, on the balls of his feet, even though he's making it look like he's totally relaxed. <clears throat> Um, he will guide you like to the left of the dance floor there's like a small seating area there with some couches on the other side of the dance floor um, and he will lead you to the part of the uh, floor that's all covered in shadow I have a question Mr. Chase man Yes. Um, how did you like sneak up behind us Trade secret. Oh, come on, um, man. Secret secrets are no fun unless they're shared with everyone, except for the humans, the kind, the mortal people. Great start. That's literally the exact opposite of what secrets are. Mm. The best secrets are ones that nobody knows. Mm. <laughs> but then how is it, how's, how's it known that it's a secret? I mean, Cause that's she... the whole point. This is getting really meta. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, okay, we can continue. Right. Sorry for interrupting. Sorry, but I just had a question. I was very curious. Ooh, are there nine of staves? I, I... He, he very much, like, laughs at you. Um, you get the feeling that even though he's very professional, he's kind of used to a little bit of goofiness. Um... <laughs> uh, he walks into the uh, the corner there, um, and he says, uh, "My prince, you have uh, people here to be presented." Oh, I turn to the I turn to the other people to people in my coterie. And say, "Oh, also forgot to tell you, the prince is invisible." That was a that's a total joke. He's not invisible. I don't say that. Like I don't say that it's a joke, but I just tell them, "Oh, he's invisible." By the way. He's really just a mist of black darkness. Um. So Prince Marcus actually gets up from his seat and uh, says, uh, I am not invisible, no, but I am not a fan of light. Um, and the first thing you can see about him is he's got um, a very, very long beard, um, black hair back into a ponytail, and probably the most expensive suit that's on the floor. I won't say the most expensive clothes, because that might be Rin, but the most expensive suit that's on the floor. I curtsy. I curtsy. That does explain it. Um. And uh, as he walks out, he says, are you here to start trouble in my city? No, we are here to introduce ourselves. As a code... I know I've been here before, but as a coterie, we're here to introduce ourselves. Do you often get people? Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, do you often get what? No, I'm just thinking. I'm just. I'm just thinking. If I were playing a Malkavian, I I would want to say, if you do, you often get people who come to your tower to start trouble. To introduce themselves to start trouble. I don't know. I had it went, it went better in my head. <laughs> yeah, you had a you had a so you, you had know a where I'm going. It, it, just, just you had said your, that his just, just his serious response. It, if you like, so if you do want to say that, that's totally fine. His total his response would be like a swift like inhale of air. Like you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> And I must say, I'm very happy that you are who you are, for the cards did tell me so. That you are a man of wealth and compassion. And of a giving nature. So I am grateful that we are now part of your city. And part of your domain. Um, are we? 
right now, though, we gotta actually get through the whole process, I think. Well, we're working on that still. Well, we're living. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're experiencing. So do you have some power in foretelling? I believe I do. Just, Interesting. Just mostly for the mundanes, you understand, but... Yeah, this... But the cards do have a way of being very accurate. That can certainly be useful. Yes. I would like to clarify that this is not the use of um, actual uh, powers in Elysium. Um, they're just the cards and the universe saying stuff. Um, don't kill he, us. He please. laughs and he says the use of powers is fine, just not on other kindred. Well, technically it was used to determine something about you. I also, see what you Your beard did. looks very nice today. Just wanted to let you know. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, um what is everyone's names? Uh, and he motions and, uh, there is, uh, a small girl with, uh, dirty blonde hair um, that falls down around her face and she's got a, uh, a full belly dancer's outfit on and she like jingles up and like hops next to him um, and she's got like a little notebook and a pen but the pen is like one of those like fluffy like super fluffy feathers and she's like he says uh, this is Chaska the harpy and she's like hi <laughs> Hi. So names then? You Delia, Delia, Odoyo, Malkavian. So she's breaking that down. Sorka, Odoyo, Lysambra, and she'll bow. I stopped chewing on one of my nails and then I said, Lucia, and bow. Uh, clan, do you know? Gang girl. Oh, okay. And miss? Miss Anya Beaujolais, if I may, good sir, and I do a deep curtsy. <laughs> okay, um, and plan for you? You would say I'm... Th one of those who is not certain. Ah, I see. Um, he he looks at uh, Chaska and kind of nods. Um, and he says, you'll find your welcome far more warm here than you would in other cities. Oh, for Do that, you... I'm very grateful. See, I told you, you were a man of compassion. Compassion and kindness. The cards are never wrong. She also predicted that we would be in a tower today. It's almost uncanny. I love that you're stuck on that tower thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he says, "Do you are you all aware of all the traditions?" Oh, certainly. I am, but for the gangrel's sake, why don't you fill everyone in? It's true. I don't know. I tried explaining it all the way up, but it was a lot of talking. I stopped listening um, halfway through. Oh. Um, so, out of character, do you guys actually not know the traditions, or like, did you want me to go through them? I mean, I know them. I know the basic ones. Out of character, I know, like, uh, yeah, I know the, I, I know the gist of it. Because I would need to find them if you guys want the rundown. I I know Bring most of them, but like off the top of my <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like there's um uh basically like only the prince has right of destruction within their domain. Um, don't create any more kindred without the prince's express permission. Um, the right of territory. Um, so certain people have territory in the city. So they'll give you a copy of the map where everyone's territory is. Make sure we respect the territory. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And yada, yada, yada. Until we figure out what the other traditions are, because I can't think of them all. One of them is literally just uphold the masquerade. <laughs> well, yeah, that is like a number one. Yeah. 
Okay, so after you go through the traditions, uh, he says, uh, I accept you into my city. Uh, please, for the love of God, don't cause us any troubles. <laughs> Sounds good, sir. It sounds like you've been dealing with a lot lately. Always. It uh, never stops. You won't hear a uh, peep nor cry from us. Don't worry. Um, and with that, he uh, he actually goes back to his seat. Um, and because you're a little bit closer now, uh, you see a good three or four people uh, around him that he's like constantly talking to back and forth. Looks like there's a lot of business going on. Well, I suppose it's time to mingle. <laughs> Do we have to? You're more than welcome to not. <laughs> this harpy person, she seems fun. Sorka's gonna go mingle. So by mingle, what do you mean? Do you want to go up to the, the bar? Do you want to go over to the couches? Do you want to go to the dance floor? I go to the bar. Do you want to see what's upstairs? Okay. Um, and, I, and I take my dog with me. Okay. I mean, this is a vampire club. They're used to super weird shit, so they'll, they'll even serve your dog, no problem. They better. Um, <laughs> I expect the best for my dog. <laughs> look, look. I don't care if I get, like, the regular shit, but the dog only gets top shelf, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, speaking of which, they, they basically, like, only have top shelf liquor. So they have pretty much anything that you would be able to possibly hope as far as alcohol goes. Uh... Oh, um, also... Sorry, you can go. That's all right. I was just saying I realized um, I forgot to put it on, but I came up with, since I had extra um, XP to spend, I do also have the eat food one. Oh, cool. That is actually way more important than people give it credit for. Yeah. Do, do, they, do they offer food at this bar? Um, they probably have some, like, hors d'oeuvres, but they don't have, like, dinner. You know, it's not like a like a pub where you can like order a meal and, and get drinks. They have like wait waiters and waitresses going around with hors d'oeuvres that are probably like ghouls of some kind or something. Am I able to um, but, entire tray of hors d'oeuvres? I mean, yeah, they, well, they, they me. Yeah, again, it's like, you know, they, they've seen this kind of song and dance before because kind of everyone comes here. So they'll get the crazy, crazy, weird, silly fish mock Malkavians or you know, the, the gang girl who want to run through the club naked, or, you know. So they, they've kind of seen it all. So, like, if you take a plate... I make a note like, of that when they tell me about the gang girl who, the gang girls who run through naked. <laughs> I just I just keep that in mind. Um, okay. But, um, but, uh, the hors d'oeuvres are, the hors d'oeuvres aren't for me. I'm, they're, I, I set the tray, uh, I set the tray down for Brutus. <laughs> Um, and I go into I, I go into I just go into bodyguard mode and keep an eye on my coterie. Gotcha. Coterie. So yeah, for for these particular uh, hors d'oeuvres, it was um, like cream cheese in a fried wonton with a little bit of salmon in it. Okay. We just like salmon. Okay. So where's everybody else headed? Um, I was going to go out onto the dance floor. Okay. I'm going to um, Disney World. <laughs> yeah. Um. What do you call it? This is this is just for the and this the is just... harpy. <laughs> okay, you can definitely go talk to the harpy. Um, she's not directly like next to the prince anymore after she took your. Uh... Oh, we got some peace shield. Yeah, that's. That's that's just for me. That's just for me keeping an eye on everybody and 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 doing going bodyguard mode. Hmm. Okay, so you do actually get a beast shield critical. Um, so I'm gonna say you're going into bodyguard mode. Um, but your eyes, uh, like your eyes of the beast activate, and like you might even like 
you know, pop your claws without noticing, and you're kind of, like, digging into the bar, like, keeping <laughs> track of everybody. Um, but, like I was saying, Chaska is kind of, like, there's, like, a small... I don't want to say, like, ottoman. What's, like, the really small kind of sofas? A seat? Yeah, like a love seat, like a two-seater, but it doesn't have, like, the big backing to it. It looks like this very fancy, like, two-seat sofa that doesn't have, like, a back to it. And she's kind of, like, lounging down on the two two things and, like, writing things down in her book. And I go, hi! She says, oh, hi! You just seemed like a fun person. I wanted to say hello. Well, thank you. I think I'm a fun person. I think you are, too. <laughs> I feel like you're part of the reason why it's okay for me to act like myself while I'm here. Because everyone seems to be pretty nice to people who say weird things. Well, it's generally fairly accepted around here with the Malkavians and everything, so... Yeah, I mean, I don't mind. I Obviously, I don't care. I, I just wanted to say thanks. You're very welcome. We have uh, Mulcavians that are silly. We have uh, witches with actual witch hats and and all kinds of uh, other fun oddities in this city. So we are very much not a normal, straightforward city when it comes to stuff like that. I mean, mortal Philly isn't really either, so. (laughs) You're not wrong there. I haven't been here too, too long, but... uh, I've been enjoying it. When did you get here? I grew up here. If you need, if you need someone to show you around, I'm actually from uh, the South American region. Oh, oh! I've never been there. I've never been anywhere, except for like family vacations. We'd sometimes go to like weird little places that just weren't popular, but you know. Yeah, also all the, that was uh, like back in the fifties, I think. No, not fifties. Back in the twenties. I get confused. It's been a little bit. Yeah, I mean, when you're this old, it's hard to keep track of all that kind of stuff. Well, I will say, if you're as old as me, you look great for your age. Get it, little kindred joke. I see what you did there. Yeah. So you're from the O'Doyle family, huh? Yes, actually. Yes. 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 Um, I'm actually technically dead. I mean, all of us are, but like, before before everyone else. It's like, one, obviously. Uh, two, um, so they have a very bad habit of making children that they just basically use as juice boxes. So what I was asking was, it seems like you're out on your own tonight. Oh, yes. Wait, the character, does the O'Doyle family do that? Does the O'Doyle family do what? Make children juice boxes? God, no. That's that's (laughs) what I thought she came from. No, I came from the Tyler School of Arts, and the people who own the Tyler School of Arts do Make children juice boxes. Ah, I see. The O'Doyles O'Doyles are just a crime family. Okay. Okay. Well, that's what she would have said. She's the harpy, so she knows all the rumors in the city. Um, yeah. So she definitely would have heard about that. Yeah, no, um, she definitely she knows that um, I was a uh, total juice box at the Tyler School of Art, probably. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll be like, uh, I'll probably I actually probably mentioned it, you know, because I was gonna say, oh, also, I seem I feel like you would like this. And I hand her just, like, I pull out my sketchbook and I just pull out a random, like, a page that I drew something on. Something very weird, eccentric, that kind of stuff. Don't know exactly what it was. Probably has some watercolor splashes here and there. And I hand it to her and say, you want it? She says, yeah, why not? It's very pretty. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I should probably give Marcus one, too. We actually have a Mulcavian around here that draws pictures that uh, tell the future. Her name's Poppy. You should check her out. Oh, yeah, and I'll get Miss Tanya to come with me, too. She can tell the future. That, was my, cards. that was my previous character, Reese. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll go I'll go look for Miss Tanya, and then we can 
Okay. Move on to someone else. Seriously. Yeah, Sounds good. Seriously, though, my Sorry. Batavian painted, painted her premonitions. Oh, that's funny. Mm. Yeah, it's it's so it's so funny. In our LARP, she she does these crayon drawings every time she comes, and they always end up coming true. It's, <laughs> it's so funny. See, Delia does more like drawings to manipulate people, not drawings for telling the future. Well, I'll something I'm gonna go be... get something to drink. Actually, Delia's okay. gonna get something to drink too. Okay. I'll say BRB. Gonna get something to drink. I, I like the, the finger name? guns. What do you say the name of the the Malkavian person was? Poppy. Poppy. What does it look like? Or she? Uh, it's actually a female. Um, she has orange pink hair. Um, she generally wears very like loose fitting uh, belly dance type clothes too. Um. But, like, not, like, full belly dance stuff and, like, some normaler type shoes and stuff like that. Like, um, Chaska's, like, like head-to-toe, like, belly dance gear. Um, Poppy generally just has more of, like, the, the top and pants kind of thing going. Cool. All right. Well, I'll tell Chaska, say thanks for the chat. I'm going to go find my future-telling friend, my fortune-teller person, and I'm going to go and introduce myself to Poppy with that person because I feel like they would also like each other. That's is like, you got it. Let me know if you come across anything interesting. I will! Alright, Rin. So let's see if you're impressing anyone. Uh, give me a dexterity athletics. Okay. Or if you have um... Isn't there a thing for, like, hobbies or something like that? I guess that's not in 5th edition. Your specialties? No, it's just the specialties. Yeah, so if you have a specialty for dance, add that in, too. I don't. But I guess we'll just go death at dex athletics. Are you counting this as a social uh, activity? Yeah, sure. I mean, you're dancing with other people, so let's do it. All right. And I'm going to turn on. Oh. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, so it adds my presence rating. Um, oh, well, it's... Dang. Could I put uh, charisma into it instead? Now, one thing I will warn you about is keep in mind all would potentially be using a power on some other people in Elysium. Yeah, but you have to be able to prove that I had it on. That's true. <laughs> I'm just making sure you know. Yeah. Um, no, I won't put it on because it, it, it actually says it needs to be um, a charisma related role at your discretion. So I won't turn it on. Um, but beautiful will uh, come into play. So I can add an extra die there. You said dexterity athletics mm -hmm. oh that's awful okay <laughs> dexterity athletics I mean do you have an argument for another set of skills or abilities that you would want to use charisma to be putting on a good impression okay I'm up for that if you're doing some very like Madonna type stuff where you're not like super moving your body yeah, it, it's dancing and trying to draw people's attention, not so much. I see. Okay. Intense choreographed dance. Okay. Well, that'll. Are those Swedish fish? I want your Swedish, I want Swedish fish. fish. What the hell? Did you bring it up for everyone? <laughs> yes. Yeah. If you guys can eat food. Uh, that is a ten and another success, so two successes. <laughs> Sorry for the squeaky chair. That's all right. Now you're I just good. really want Swedish fish now. I know, me too. Well, sorry. You guys can't eat food, so... I'm going to buy some at work tomorrow. Yeah, I definitely got to get a uh, a bag for next week. <laughs> it's so funny. I was, it's like, here, rooting too. around the... To make oh, it fancy. Fancy. I, no, I was rooting through the cabinet and couldn't find any kind of snacks that I wanted to eat. And I was like, whatever, I'll just get some coffee. And then, like, you bought in this fish and I was like, oh, 
That's what I want. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, I, I have a, uh, this is what she's actually walking around carrying. Um, cause she totally saw that there were candy in here and was like, can I have like a glass of candy? And they're like, That's yeah. Awesome. And then they come over with like an actual like little glass. She's like, no, a wine glass of candy. <laughs> That's Wait, awesome. I interrupted. Sorry. No problem. Um, so I believe that you were going over and talking to Miss Tanya. Oh, are we already back to me? Uh, yes, because I think uh, Lucia is just kind of in a holding pattern unless she lets me know. Uh, and uh, Sorsha... If like if I'm able to if I'm able to like uh, bodyguard and hit the dance floor as well like I do, or do other things as well then I'll do that. Okay. I mean you can definitely like hit the dance. So most of this place is very very visible. Um, from a person that does fighting, it's. You can tell that it's specifically designed that way, right? Um, basically, any kind of threat would be easily identified because of the glass floor and, like, you know, you can see the entire floor in one chunk. There's nowhere to go. Um, so it, if you're dancing, you will basically be in the center of everything. And as long as you're not too focused on dancing to be distracted, you can still dance and kind of, like, look around and keep an eye on everybody. Yeah, I mostly want to see how good I am at dancing, too. Okay. And then also, if Miss if, if Miss Tanya wanted to do anything before I go talk to her. I see. That's a crit. Oh, damn. I, I just try to match the rhythm of everybody else. Lucy is, like, doing backflips. <laughs> um, but I think, I think, I, I don't even realize the eyes of the beast are still on, and I'm just watching as I'm moving. That's funny. Yeah, Pete, you can tell, like, so So everybody's kind of, like, in interested in watching you, but at the same time, like, your claws and eyes are still out, so they're, like, wary of you. <laughs> they're, like, very interested, but also worried about being attacked at the same time. Um, and, uh, Sorsha's doing her thing as well. Like I said, much more like seductive movements as opposed to like crazy animated dancing like you're doing. Four pencils in my hair. I feel like through the night you just get more pencils. Yes. I, f I feel like, you know, every hour you should just add another pencil to it. That works. <laughs> I just didn't want to do the two thing and have it look like I was trying to do, like, the Chinese hairstyle. So I was like, I'll have four. And there's three Ticonderoga pen pencils and one mechanical one. I see. So that is a good point, Miss Tanya. You do have some time before uh, she gets back to you. So did you want to do anything else with that time? I'm just sitting on the couch watching the crowd... Making sure nothing weird is going on. Trying to get a reading general of everybody. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on in here yeah. because the masquerade <laughs> is not being um, well. Yeah, other observed. <laughs> um, but compared to your reaction from other cities, uh, this city is actually very accepting. Um, and you'll notice, um, actually, both you and Lucia, because she's kind of has a big eye out as well, will notice uh, a good crowd of people that kind of, like, keep to themselves. Um, because there's actually, like, a decent uh, overlap of Anarchs with the Camarilla around here. Um, so you can definitely see, like, several Anarchs in the corner. That are definitely the more like jeans and flannels and bandanas type of crowd. Um, so they seem to be interacting perfectly fine. Like there doesn't seem to be any like infighting between the two or anything like that. Um, 
So it there it's a very Philadelphia is very much a melting pot um of the clans. And uh like Marcus said, you are definitely more accepted here than you would be elsewhere based on your clan status. Hmm. So it's a very interesting juxtaposition of Yeah people in like very very rich outfits and then the anarchs with like their street clothes on and like everybody kind of just seems to be doing business intriguing all right <laughs> we're gonna fit in just fine <laughs> <laughs> and uh the other important thing that you notice is uh, Delia found a cup of uh, Swedish fish somewhere, so. <laughs> now I'm walking over to you with them. Hey, Ms. Yeah. Yes, dear. I have that we should find because I found out they do art and they tell fortunes. So they tell fortunes with their art. So I was thinking it'd be really cool if we both met this person. Also, I just came up with a brilliant idea. Why don't we see if this person can maybe do some magical cards for you? They could like design some, maybe put some of their fortune telling power into it too. Well, that could be quite interesting, yes. Yeah, their name's Poppy. Let's go find them. They got orange, pinky hair. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Of course they do. All right. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with that? Yeah, no. I, it's, it's just... I hate to use the phrase, the kids these days. Oh. But... I'm I'm almost getting used to all these strange colors of hair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it it it's it's I interesting. I mean, I get I get it. The time that I grew up in was a little different, but then like at this time, but also I grew up in like the the like arts crowd during like the early 1900s. So it was always just kind of like you know, accept whatever's going on kind of thing. So just as the years have gone by, I've just kind of been like, cool, this is new. All right. And if I was able to, <laughs> I would totally dye my hair. Ely was coloring her hair with crayons, you know. <laughs> just acrylic paint. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah. Miss Tanya and I look for Poppies. Poppies. All right. Um, so you will find Poppy on the second floor, and she will be hanging out on a couch with a few other people. She's got a like big old sketch pad in front of her. She's actually got really, really thick glasses. Oh, fun. Um, I walk over and I stand there and wait until it seems like it's a good time for me to say something. Okay. You wait to speak? <laughs> yes, I am. Uh, um, so, so you walk over and wait to speak, and you end up waiting for, like, an entire minute, and, and nothing is said. Does it seem like the conversation is going to end? She's not talking to anybody. Oh. Oh, okay. Um, I, uh, um, yes, I wait. And then I, uh, take a step forward. And I... So, like, oh, as, no. as, you, as you take a step forward, uh, she kind of, like, turns her head to the side. And, like, you see, like, a, like, her face, like, tenses. Now's not a good time. Maybe. Who who's that? This God damn it. Hehe. <laughs> I am I am Delia. I came to say hello. 
Oh, Delia, are you new? Yes, yes and no. Kind Here's of. this picture of new people, and she's got she's got a picture of four people in crayon. It's it's he, by no means a masterwork. It's basically stick figures, but she's got a picture of four new people coming off the elevator. Yeah, this yeah. is you, right? It's you see that fortune telling, it's Tanya. Oh no, he, no I, I don't see that. She goes like this. Grace, do you you make her blind? She's she's definitely blind. Yeah. Hee <sighs> hee. <laughs> so was my seer. <laughs> so funny. So so this is actually a player character that was made ten years ago. <laughs> so <laughs> this isn't an NPC I just made up or anything. I'm you I'm imagine, using NPCs from the other game. This character, like, you had a chance to play her too. I like, did. I mean, oh, wow. That would be that really so funny. funny. That would be really funny. Spider Man meme. <laughs> like hey, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, Delia is like, <gasps> see, yes, yes. That is us. That is us. We look exactly like that. Hmm. Um, but I have a friend here, Miss Tanya. Um, I just I came to say hi because I found out that you draw pictures. I draw pictures too. Um, and I'm also Malkavian. And so are you, and I thought that was pretty cool. But I also brought Miss Tanya because she does cool, cool little readings with her cards that also tell the future. She predicted that we were in a tower, and she also predicted that the prince was a nice and compassionate man. Oh, that's super cool. She does, she does uh, foretellings as well. Um, and by the way, like. Because you're a Malkavian and you're walking over to a Malkavian, you immediately would have gotten like the Malkavian like ping, like, hey, look, another Malkavian. Yeah. <laughs> um and uh she says, uh, is she a Malkavian too? No. Oh, Could okay. Be. Could be. Well yeah. she should be. And then she goes, one of us. One of one us. Of one, us. Of one of us. us. <laughs> And the other people next to her start chanting, too. Which is actually a totally normal thing that happens. Yeah. Wait, are they Malkavians, too? Do uh, people around here? Probably, based on, based on yeah. who she's talking to. They, they are definitely, like... They seem like some very silly characters, put it that way. Cool. Well, she's not quite as, like... She's still getting used to people. Um... As, as to quote her earlier, she said kids these days. So, yeah. Um, I will let her talk if she wants to. Do you want to talk, Miss Tanya? I'm Miss Tanya, and she, like, waves totally the wrong direction. <laughs> Good evening, darling. Oh. oh, I love your accent. Oh, well, thank you. I like your accent. Where are you from? Where are you from, sugar? <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in New Orleans. Oh. oh, I've never been. I've always wanted to go. Uh, marvelous place, but it's it's changed through the years. I'll tell you. I've heard it's haunted. Yeah, that's why I'm so interested to go. I've heard the the culture there is still amazing. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Sinking. I yeah, it's it's sinking, yeah, and the fact that most of the graveyards have to be above the earth because they can't be in the earth because the water is too high and they'd just be They're sopping wet body. skeletons. Yeah. <laughs> this has been sinking for hundreds of years longer. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so, like, have you, f how, from living there, have you, like, like, drawn a line on a building, right? And just, like, over the years, watched it disappear? Never thought of doing that. Well, next time you go, I feel like we should. 
We should just draw Actually, a line. Actually, a really neat idea. And Poppy, like, hmm. I mean, right, I mean you wouldn't be back. able to watch it disappear, but I will describe to you how it disappears. All right, we're going to cut back to the dance floor <laughs> with uh, Sorsha and uh, Lucia. Um, I would like to have moved over to um, Sorsha after the other two disappeared upstairs and give my successes to her to... I, I want to dance to compliment her so that she so, so that so, moves to her. I'm, I'm going to do this. I think you guys need to do, like, a whole dirty dancing routine. <laughs> so, like, so, like, you'll lead Lucia and, like... You know, you like pick her up and like. <laughs> if if it if it if it puts her on the forefront and not me, I will do that. Yeah, sure. Let's go for it. Um, uh, but um, like as as we're dancing, um, I'm just going to like whisper, the others went upstairs, boss. I'm sure they'll be fine. Amelia's more than capable of protecting herself. I'll stay here then. Three successes. Uh, gonna add another to put an assist. Is that how assist works? How's assist work? Um, it just like adds uh additional success. Um, I don't know that there's actually like an assist mechanic in Five E. Do you know anything about that, Ren? I'm fairly certain there isn't. So basically, like the way I'll do it is I'll give you like half of the successes together if that makes sense so so roll yours and like we'll take the average successes of the two and that will be how well you are dancing as a couple all right do i do athletic charisma or again it, it's based on how you're dancing so the way sorsha is dancing is she's being very um expressive and seductive and charismatic and and drawing people in with her motions um, the way you dance with athletics and dexterity is you tend to be very um, flamboyant, lots of movement, um, flourishing. Uh, well, I'm trying to make her look good, so... Yeah, like... <laughs> I'll, I'll, do, I'll do charisma since I'm trying like, to make her look good. Thriller. Okay. Yeah. Thriller. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, so it looks like three successes overall is your average. Um, so you're doing really, really well between the two of you. All righty. Um, a person approaches you. Um, very, very beautiful. Uh, very long blonde hair. Um, in a white suit. Uh, and says... Uh, Good evening. Would you two mind speaking? I do it quite often, but in what regard are you referring? Oh, You're new no, to the city, and I. The two people that have never been in the Camarilla alone. You did. Good job. We're all dead. <laughs> oh, I just oh how are you this evening? We're definitely not Sabat. We are not Sabat. <laughs> <Do not worry. laughs> Definitely not so bad. Definitely. <laughs> I feel like I feel like upstairs at that exact same time, Delia's just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah. No. She just phone. says. She says. What do you? What do you have in, in mind for conversing? I just wanted to speak. I generally talk to everyone that's new to the city. start with introductions, do we not? Of course. Uh, my name is Nathaniel. I'm a Torridor here. I am I am Sorka O'Doyle. I am in the Sombra. And you? Ah. Well, welcome to our fair city. Thanks. Can I get you something to drink? He said his name was have... Nathaniel. I'm sorry? He said his name was Nathaniel? Yeah. Okay, I'm just taking notes, sorry. Don't apologize for taking notes. Uh... Um, yes, um, 
uh, I have. I'll take wine. In this. Of course. Did you want blood included? Is it fresh? Of course. Then yes. Um, he'll beckon one of the uh, the waiters that's going around with the hors d'oeuvres and, and put it in order. Uh, he looks to Lucy and he says, and you? I'm... Fine's fine. Okay. Um, so he'll send them back. Um... So he says, please, come sit with me for a moment. We'll join him. Sarka will find a spot and sit. You seem quite cautious. I like that. We are new here. We do not... We'll keep our cards close to our chest until we know what this city is offering. That makes sense. Too many people here like to uh, play all their cards at once. If there is kindred blood, in, or not, I'm sorry, kind blood in the in the wine, I think I need to make a willpower roll. Okay, you didn't ask for blood, so they wouldn't have put blood in yours. Okay. Um, but you would need to uh, rouse the blood to imbibe, unless you have the merit. Uh, so you make a rouse check. Yeah, but where is it? I don't know, I'll see it on here. Huh. I'll just Let's see. put this little dice icon to see if that does thing. <laughs> Thing. Yeah, so you get hungrier. Um, I guess we could always do like slash one d ten if we needed to, but it looks like that seemed to work anyway. So yeah, I just I just hit the little um, the little uh, die icon in the upper left hand corner. Ah, okay. So yes, yeah, so you do get slightly hungrier. Um, Nathaniel says uh, so one piece of information that I will give you for free is that I am actually the Seneschal of Philadelphia well that would explain your curiosity you guys are like it's the cheat sheet um no, uh -huh. Seneschal, Seneschal, I, Seneschal is basically the head assistant of the prince. Uh, well, it was established that 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 I don't I don't know all the rules, so I just right. so I say so I openly say, "What is the Seneschal?" Oh my dear, you're unaware of the positions. I, I am uh, the second in charge, uh, directly under the prince. Basically, the vice president to his president, if we were a democracy. I guess you could call me a vice tyrant to his tyrant. A man in waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you do you have uh, any interests of uh, investing? Any businesses that you own? I, I am a woman of great wealth and business affluence. Are you looking to invest? I work alongside my sister in procuring and selling art and other such accoutrements. Well, that is right up my alley. I am always looking for new business opportunities. I own several galleries in the area. Well, then it seems becoming your friend is beneficial.
not all of us have the uh, the talent you see, so I tend to run more of the business end. That is a talent in of itself. So true. He looks at Lucia. What about you? What are your interests? I... I can carve. Hmm. It's actually an interesting copy. So, as he's looking at you both, um, he's he's simultaneously very beautiful, almost like porcelain, um, and unmoving. And it's very unnerving when talking to him when he's looking at you like that. He just has a, a very... He has a stillness to him that even among vampires of low humanity is unnatural. It's basically like a physical act all in itself to to cancel out all movement. Uh, I would like to insight check um, to try and figure out what how he's doing that. Okay. Uh, wits or so yes, I'd go wits insight. Okay, two successes. Um, so you're unable to determine exactly how he's doing it, um, but you do understand that it takes a mastery of muscles. Um, basically, a counterbalancing, if you will. So if you feel your body moving one way, you tense your muscles another way to stop yourself from swaying. It, it shows a mastery beyond the norm when it comes to controlling one's body. I think when she notices that, um, uh, she just starts studying him. Um, as he notices you, he kind of uh, gives like a side smile with no warmth to it and turns back to Sorsha. So, what type of art do you normally produce? Are you painter, canvas? I do not make the art myself. I handle the business aspect, much like yourself. My sister is the artist, and she has trained for many a decade to perfect her craft. Uh, Delia, she paints and also does um, uh, uh, mixed media as well. I mentioned both of that. Um, and uh, she probably emphasizes, I would show you, but... And she just kind of gestures that her lack of a cell phone. No, I am aware of this. I uh, keep no technology on myself, as it were. I would be interested in this uh, mixed media, though. We could certainly use that as a draw for the studios. Interesting. I have a uh, an answering service. Uh, please have her give me a call. Um, and with like a flourish, um, he basically pops out like a business card and he hands it to you. Um, it just basically has a phone number on it. No other identifying information of any kind. She'll keep that handy then. Okay. He says, well, it was a pleasure. It was nice having a chance to speak with you. With that, I will take my leave. If you have need of me, contact. Of course. And uh, he'll very, very gracefully stand up and walk away. 
Well, he seemed nice. He's very strong. In what way? Physically. I see. Interesting. Like, like he's a very practiced uh, ambush predator. Only mildly concerning then. Is the second in charge here. I don't think it's all that surprising. No. All right. Um. So, it's going to start closing down for the night. Um. Everyone's going to start uh, gathering their things and going back to their coteries and moving out. Um, is there anything else you wanted to do before we leave? No, I think I have everything I need. I wanted to get Poppy's contact information. Uh, yeah, you can definitely get Poppy's contact information. Uh, I believe she carries a cell phone on her. She's one, of the, she's one of the naughty ones. I have, a, I have one of those flip phones that, like, flip mm -hmm. up, but then if you yeah. turn it, you can, like, push it. Yeah, she has kind of the same thing. It's like a sidekick. Yes. I think um, the one... I, I have a very specific one that I had when I was little that I'm thinking of. It's like kind of touch screen in the sense of like this screen is there. And it's... The one I had was green, but I think hers is blue. And it... If you turn it sideways and you push it up, it has like the full keyboard. But I think it might have been Motorola? I don't know. I remember it had an M or an N on it. It could certainly be a Motorola. There were a lot of variations on that kind of style during that original Android time. Yeah. But yeah, that's what she has. So she would totally get her number. Okay. What about you, Miss Tanya? <sighs> I'm I'm good. I just just observing right now. Got I'm gonna talk like this for days now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I assume you will all join up together and go down the elevator. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm telling everyone about my night. Do you want me to? Squeeze? All right. Do you want me to? Do you want me to to finish writing the rest of Prince on the P? No, <laughs> that would be graffiti. But they didn't finish it. But the only way you can do graffiti is if you get permission. You got to get like a whole. It's a whole long process. It's crazy, and I feel like even I feel like, like, our society is even more strict on it than, like, normal society. So, so it's funny. It's a bot. You just fucking do whatever you want. So, you can just do that no problem. Camarilla, you, you, to, to be a graffiti artist in the Camarilla, you probably have to fill out, like, a 52-page form and triplicate to, like, you know, yeah. reserve your wall to, to do yeah. your... And then someone has <laughs> to, like, inspect it. To, like, make sure that there are no hidden messages. <laughs> well, we could just blame it on the Anarchs. Ah, that's true. That is true. Damn. I mean, if we were going to blame it on them, we would write Poser. Huh. I mean, you're not wrong. The the Sabat very much is like, Anarchs are just our light shit. <laughs> um. Prince Poser. <laughs> no, maybe next time. We we kind of we we we're kind of high on the radar tonight because we're new. You know, you know, because you remember how that one girl she can't even see, but she knew we were there. So lots of people probably know that we're there. So I feel like, especially with everyone leaving at 
similar times if we were to go in and then do that and the next person were to go in and see that they would be like hmm those people came in before me the new people hmm. <laughs> we can wait but it's a good idea good idea let's see I, I hold the the rest of uh, my wine glass down so my dog can drink the rest of it. Oh, that's not good for them. He, he's not mortal completely. Also, what's your dog's name, Lucia? Brutus. What? Brutus. Brutus. Cute. Now you need a cat named Pixie. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I do. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you guys have a nice night? It was eventful. We met the Seneschal. The Seneschal? He was interested That's... in seeing your artwork. Why didn't you come get me? You were upstairs. Ah, I have pictures and everything. And I take out my phone, and it's like grainy pictures of just my art. Mm. Did you tell him about the mixed media and how I combine acrylic and newspaper to make collages understand. of people. I don't understand how any of that works, but I told uh, him you were capable. Well, cr- I use acrylics sometimes as glue. That is, that is something not a lot of people do. I use that to hold the paper to the canvas. I'm sure it would fascinate him when you have the chance mm-hmm. to speak. There were three pens and pencils in your hair when this started. Now there's like 15. Yes, I collected them as we went. <laughs> people drop them more often than you think and you gotta have a lot of pencils they always no, get I, I just I have this in my head that Delia has like an entire pocketbook just for pencils but she, know, only, she only ever uses one at a time right so she like pulls out a pencil and like writes something down and like sticks it in her hair <laughs> and then like later on she needs to write something else down and she pulls out a brand new pencil and like no but I feel like every single time she's like I lost my pencil. Where did my pencil go? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, no, you know how, like, with Impractical Jokers, they have that one thing where they try and put pencils in people's pockets? Mm-hmm. Without see how many they can get? Yeah. That's it. Um, well, cool. I can, I can contact him. I can talk to him. Tell him all about it. Oh, good. That's what he's hoping. Enjoy. What, what? What clan is he? He is a Toreador. I just understand he's going to be quite full of himself when you do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what he is. Um, well, if he tries to critique my art, I will uh, have a few words with him as well. Don't care if he's the Seneschal. My art is my property. He does not have any, any, any permission to critique it. He's just going to present it. Mm. Now, the people who come to the gallery and view it, 100%, they can critique it. Not him. I will let him know. What if he goes in the gallery? Well, if he goes in, he can critique it, but not tell me. Keep it in his head. Critique it in his head. So I think we will uh, close things up here as you all get back into your limo. Alrighty. And it uh, takes you back to your various havens. And uh, you can continue to work on the Kobori haven that you are uh, not happy with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy with it. The others might be. I set it on fire. <laughs> thank you. Better. Thank, thank you for the digs. I burn it. <laughs> All right. Oh, so that... no, wait. Oh, Miss what? Tanya. What? Miss Tanya, tonight marks the beginning of our story. Have us do us do us a re- do us a prediction oh, on God. how the story will end. Well, I just pulled a card for for that that Seneschal guy, and, and oh, oh, pull, pull, and, pull, pull, and, and he he's he's got the eight of cups it means he he's disappointed in life and he's looking for new opportunities 
Because mm. he, he doesn't care how much riches he has. He's looking for more. Oh, he wants more cups. So the fact he that... He wants more cups with fishes in them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we got that. Okay. Yeah. For for our lives, are you talking about? Our unlives? Our, our time no, with, for, with these people? For the beginning of this story. For our conquest. We're going to have a conquest. We're going to have a conquest. This is it. Nine of Cups. Oh! Oh, he got one! Yep. Yeah. Nine of Cups is good. Why is it good? Wait, no. We had one cup, and we took his eight cups. There you are. Mm. Perfect. The nine of cups is... Yes, I don't look it up on online because I know everything about... <laughs> right off the top of my head. I do know nine of cups is good, but I don't know right off the top of my head what it does. It's, it's about fulfillment, happiness, and contentment basking in the abundance of life and experiencing your emotions with intensity and pleasure. It's good. Yeah, so you don't have any of those or emotions, really, but, like, you can no. bask in your your uh, <laughs> superiority <laughs> over others and uh, potentially diablerizing uh, your everybody. elders <laughs> and keeping everybody else down. <laughs> We win. All right. Game is over. Game is over. <laughs> Good job, team. We did it. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see if we win uh, as time goes on. Yes, indeed. Um, so thank you to Quarter Square X for the raid. Thank you to all of our new followers. Quarter Square X, Mr. Batman Classic. There was another one, too, that was at the start. It was, let me find it, uh, Black Iaguman X. Black Iaguman X. Um, thank you, Insane Oshano, for the bit. And that is us for the day. We are going to wrap it up. I am incredibly tired, so we're going to just make a hasty retreat here. Um, catch us again next week at 8.30 for more uh, Sword of Cain. So have a great night. Thanks for stopping Bye. by, everybody. Yeah.